Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And this is another in an ongoing series of advanced techniques for keying. And in this one, I want to look at a very particular problem relating to edges that have real world light wrap. Now, if we look at this shot here, I've composited my green screen against this background, but these edges here are too bright and they just don't look right. So what I'm trying to achieve is a look that's much more like that. And you'll see that that works nicely for there. And watch here on the hair. It all just sits in much better. And we've been able to tame those overbright, light wrapped edges of our foreground. And this is a technique you'll often find yourself needing to use because a lot of green screen is shot with a very heavy rim light uh, that in the final composite we end up not wanting to use as in this instance. So it's really well worth knowing about this. Okay, so here we are. Here's my source image green screen from the open source movie Tears of Steel. And here's the background that I'm going to composite it over. So let's select the source image and I'm going to use the new Delta Kia in Fusion 9. But you can use Primat or Ultra Kia or one of the methods I showed you in my previous tutorials. OK, so here's our Delta Kia. I'm going to click on the pick there, select the screen color. I'm going to switch over to status so we can check out what we're doing. I'm just going to make a slight adjustment to the balance, which helps to solidify the foreground a little bit. Uh, come over to Matt. I'm going to select the low threshold and increase that till we've cleared the backing. And then select the high and then solidify the foreground like so. And then we can switch back to final result. That's a pretty good key. However, for this method, we will simply be using the alpha channel from a Delta Kia. And what we'll need to do is have a despilled version of our source plate. So what I'm going to do is add a matte control down here, pipe the source image into it. Let's have a look at that. Let's come over to spill. Let's select green, turn up spill suppression and let's select well done. That's good enough. So there we go. We got our despilled foreground. So I'm going to come back to my Delta Kia. And what I want to do is I want to turn the alpha into an RGB image, just to make life a bit easier. So I'm going to select channel booleans and I'm going to copy the alpha foreground into the RGB. So alpha foreground, alpha foreground, alpha foreground. And for the alpha itself, I'm going to select white, which surprisingly makes that black, but it, it effectively means it's, it's a solid alpha. Next, I'm going to add an erode dilate node. So it's shift space bar, erode dilate. I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. And I'm going to add another channel booleans after that. So what we want to do is we want to take our despilled version here, that one there, and add it to that channel booleans. And we want to swap the order of those inputs. So I'm going to hit Command T and that'll put the mat on top. And what we're going to do is we're going to pre-multiply our despilled image by the black and white mat. We're going to select Multiply and we can leave the RGB as it is because they all contain the same grayscale value. But we're going to select red foreground for the alpha. So now what we can do is we can select our Erode Dilate node and we can reduce the amount to get rid of these overbright edges. So let's have a look at these overbright edges as I adjust the amount. So we can come down to somewhere like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a blur. I'm going to set the amount up to around 12. And what that's doing is it's blurring out the edge pixels, giving us a little bit more to play with, but we've lost the overbright areas. So we've got pixels from a little bit further in from the edge. So the next step is to add a brightness contrast. And what we're going to do is ensure that we've got clip white and clip black turned on and that the alpha is also enabled. And this is just going to keep our values within the zero to one range. And I'll show you why in just in one second. Our next step is going to be to add another channel booleans. 
and we're going to do something slightly odd. I'm going to move it down there and we're going to pipe the brightness contrast into the foreground. So we've got the same image going into the background and the foreground. And what we're going to do is we view it. I'm going to set the operation to divide. So we're basically going to unpre-multiply. And to do that, we need to set all the channels to alpha foreground. And then we get this result. I just want to point out what happens if we bypass that brightness contrast. You'll see we get this wacky result, and that's because there are some out of range black values in there that are causing strange numbers. And I'd also like to point out that we need to have high quality turned on, because if we don't, we get that, which is also rather curious. So what has this done? So instead of this, where all our edges are eaten away by that erode dilate, we've got this, where we've basically recovered those pixels from underneath the mat. And we can now use those to reinstate the edge pixels on our main image. But first of all, we need to create a mat just so this blurred image appears only on our edges. So to do that, we're going to take our black and white mat here. I'm going to click on the flow area and add another channel booleans. Take the output of that mat into this and set the operation to negative. And we want to set the alpha foreground to black. So we get an inverted mat. Bring that over here. Let's add a blur. And let's set that blur size again to about 12. That looks like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-multiply this by this. So I'm going to add the channel booleans here. Take the output of that blurred mat into there. Set the operation to multiply. And we're going to set the alpha foreground to red. So now we have these blurred pixels just on the edge. Let's not worry about the outside for now because that's all going to disappear later on. So the next thing we want to do is we want to merge this over the top of our despilled foreground. So I'm going to click on the flow area, add a merge. I'm going to take the despilled foreground, bring that into there. And then I'm going to take the output of our blurred edges and put that over the top like that. And next what we need to do is we need to pre-multiply this result by our mat. So again, let's add a channel booleans. And we need to grab the mat from over here, you remember that mat there, and bring it into there. Just add some pipe routers to make this a little bit tidier. And I'm going to look at this, set the operation to multiply and the alpha foreground to red. So now we're ready to merge the result over our background image. So let's bring our background image over there, merge it over the top, and we get that. And then if I come to this merge here, where we're merging our new edges over, you'll see that if I adjust the blend there, you can see how well our effect is working in terms of darkening down these light wrapped edges. Now this mat here that is our mat for our edge is a little bit thin because of the blur. And we can fix that by adding a brightness contrast. So I'm just going to turn on clip black and clip white to keep our mat within range. And then we can use a combination of the gamma and the high value to control the edges of this mat. So let's look at the merged result here and zoom right in to get a feel for what's happening. So Here's with that bypassed. And then if we increase the gamma, you can see how that's encroaching more on these edges here. And the high, again, is making that even more solid on those edges. So we're now very clearly seeing those blurred edge pixels. So this is something we can entirely adjust to taste. I'm going to leave it around there for the purposes of this, because I want to show you something else that we need to be taking care of. And that is, you can probably see here that our blurred image is completely lacking in grain and we're putting that back over the top. And I think you can see that in this area here. So what we need to do is take the image just there after we've added that divide and we need to add some film grain. And then we can just play with the strength just till we've regrained those edges, something like that. Obviously I've gone much too far with this brightness contrast here, but it was just to show you how that's 
working there. So the overall result is looking like that. Here's our before and here's our after. And I think we can reduce that value. We don't need to go quite so crazy. This will probably do. So you can see we've got various different controls where we can adjust how much of this effect is being applied. Now this is working pretty well for most of the areas of the shot because they're almost all out of focus. But I don't think it's working well here in this foreground. If we zoom in on that, you'll see that we're just getting this sort of a blurred lack of detail in here. And to fix that, we can add a polyline mask. So click on the flow area, click on the polyline tool, mask around here. And I can use this, if I invert it, I can use that to mask the merge here. And you'll see that that's now excluded this area of the hair from the effect. So I can obviously just soft edge that as required. And if I bypass that, you can see we've restored that nice lighting effect on the edge of his hair just there on the foreground. So that might have been a little bit confusing, so I just wanted to give you a very quick run through again of what exactly we did. So first of all, we keyed our image using the Delta Keyer. Then we turned that into this grayscale matte. We also needed to create this despilled version of our foreground image. So then we took this matte, we eroded it, and then we used it to pre-multiply our despilled image so as to eat away at those bright light wrapped edges. Then we blurred the result. We added a brightness contrast to keep the values within range. And then we used this divide to unpre-multiply so we could get these expanded blurred edges. We added a little bit of film grain there. And then we created a mat for these edges. So we took this mat here, we inverted it, we blurred it, we added a brightness contrast to control the edges of that, and then we used that to pre-multiply our blurred foreground edges. And then we merged that result over the top of our foreground, our despilled foreground. Then we used our black and white mat there to pre-multiply the result of this. So we're only pre-multiplying it once, and that's really important. And then we just merged it over our background, and we got this result here. And obviously we can use various controls, including this blur here, which is controlling the depth of the effect. We can adjust the intensity of the mat. That erode dilate is obviously a control we want to adjust, as is this blur amount here. So we've got a lot of control over exactly how this effect works. Now you're probably thinking this is an awful lot of work and you wouldn't want to be doing this each time, but of course you don't need to do this each time. You can build either a macro or a group and just simply reuse it. And what I'll do is I'll post a version of this that you can use in the comments. And there's just one final thing I'd like to point out and that's if we look at this merge here where we're merging our smeared edges over the top of our foreground. If we come to this merge here and we look at the subtractive additive slider and then we reduce that value, I think you can see that we can dramatically affect how that darkens those soft edges. So that's another really useful control to think about adjusting. So I hope that's been useful. This is a very uh, versatile technique that can be used in a lot of different ways once you start to get used to it. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again on the next one.